Slap Chop was a huge craze in 2022. The Slap Chop is Slap Chop. Slap Chop. It's a technique where you prime a model black, give it a heavy dry brush of gray, and then put on key highlights in white. After that, all you need to do in theory is put contrast on and you're actually done. I'm still pretty new to painting minis, and in addition to that, I have essential hand tremors, which basically means I can't control my hands shaking, which doesn't exactly lend itself to painting minis. But I've been really curious to try the slap chop technique to see if it can help me get through my models quicker. Rob at the Honest Wargamer named the technique last year and anything that can help me get models on the table quicker, especially troops, which I really loathe doing, I'm really happy to try out. So the first thing I'm going to do is binge a few videos from people that have tried the slap chop technique. It seems like an easy technique technique, but I've got a few questions that I want to answer. Do I have to be neat and have a steady hand for this? When I do make mistakes, how do I actually fix them? And how do I do metallics given there are no Citadel metallic contrast paints? I have a whole bunch of other questions as well, but rather than watching more videos to try and answer them, let's just paint a model and see what we can figure out ourselves. I'm going to paint a squad of crew today, and let me know in the comments if you've tried Slap Chop yourself. If if you've got any advice for somebody like me who's maybe newer to the technique and doesn't really know what they're doing. With the test model primed black, the first thing I want to do is give it a heavy dry brush of grey. From what I saw in the videos, I want the grey to have a pretty good coverage on the model with black only in the recesses and the hard to reach areas. I also haven't been able to see what grey people are using in general, so I'm just going to wing it and use Dawnstone here. It looks light enough that contrast will show over it, but not too bright that the white highlights wouldn't show. The first thing I'm going to do here is test on the ridges of my fingers so I can make sure not too much paint is coming off the dry brush. On the model itself, let's do a bit of a heavier dry brush towards the top of the model and get a little bit gentler as we move down towards the leg. That should give the impression of light hitting the model from the top down as well. With the grey done, I am a little bit nervous about how little black there is in general, but that's the point of a test model. Let's crack on and get my Pro Acryl white and give the model the gentlest of tickles, just to make sure we're getting some white on the raised areas of the model, which make it really pop in those key places. And I've got to say, even without the contrast paint on, this is already looking pretty cool, which is a huge surprise to me. From here, let's get the skin painted, and I'm going to use Militarum Green for the skin and Gore Grunter Fur for the stomach. From what I saw in the videos, people were thinning the contrast down, so I'm also going to water it down with a couple of brushes of water. And here is where I'm running into my first problem. I've thinned the contrast down so much that when I'm putting the brown on the stomach, the paint on the skin is still wet, so the paints are actually mixing together. All I'm going to do to fix that is dry my brush off and let's soak up where the brown has run onto the skin and leave all of the skin to completely dry for a little bit while we move on to other areas. This shouldn't be a problem when we're batch painting the rest of the models because we'll paint all of the skin at once and by the time we get through to the ninth model, the skin on the first model will have dried. For this test model though, let's move on to some other areas to give the skin a chance to dry. We're going to paint some thinned down Black Legion on the hair as well as the shoulder pads. And then we're going to get some skeleton hoard on the cloth bits as well. Now, this is making me a little bit nervous because it looks really translucent. Skeleton hoard though is a really popular paint, so I am going to give it a chance and leave it to dry, and we'll see what it looks when we finish the model. While that paint dries, let's move on to painting the weapon itself. So here I'm going to use Basilicum Grey for the metal on the weapon. It's what Games Workshop actually recommend on the website, so let's see what actually happens. 
For the wood, I'm also going to use wild wood. And I've got to say, I don't know if it's the gray next to this awesome looking wood color, but I'm pretty impressed with how it's looking. From here, I just need to do the base on the test model, and I want it to tie in with the rest of my Tau army, where I've done some mud on the base, and then on that I've added some snow, which I think is a really nice effect. With that done, I'm really happy with how the base has come out, and that's the test model actually finished. The slap chop technique only took around 30 minutes from start to finish, and then the base took around another 10 minutes. 40 minutes for a model from start to finish for me is incredibly fast. I would love to see what this looks like on models other than the crew. For example, on armies like the Aldari where they have units with a lot of flat armor pieces, does the dry brushing look really obvious giving the technique an overall rushed look and feel about it? Let me know in the comments if you've tried it yourself and how that's worked out because I'm really curious to know. From here, I'm going to follow the same process for the remaining nine models in the unit. Now I've done the test model, I know which areas are easy and which ones are hard, so I'm just going to batch paint all of them at once. And then here I'm going on to catch the raised areas with white. With the dry brushing done, let's move on to using the contrast paint. As I thought from my test model, by the time I've painted the skin on all nine and go back to the first model and paint the brown stomach, the skin is completely dry, so I don't get the issue with the two colors mixing together. I got all nine models dry brushed and painted up within three hours, which is absolutely insane. That's just 20 minutes per model. I was so impressed with that, I decided to spend time on making them look unique by painting the silver and gold details where those models have them. From here, I'm also going to do all of the bases in batches as well. And I managed to get those bases done in just 90 minutes for all of the models. That means from start to finish, these models are averaging out at 30 minutes, including the bases, which is absolutely crazy. I'm so, so impressed with Slapchop, and I can't believe the level of quality given the technique is so fast. So as a beginner painter, what do I actually think of the Slapchop technique? Well, I'm not sure it's going to work on all armies and all models, but I am excited to continue trying this technique, especially on troops, which is really what I need to speed up on getting painted. For me, the painting part of this hobby is my least favorite aspect of it, so anything I can use to speed that up, I'm really happy to try and experiment with. If you found this video helpful and you're new to the hobby, I think you'll really like this video next where I cover how to paint your first Warhammer Mini. Thank you so much for watching, your support means everything, and I'll see you in the next video.